G'day, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be looking at what's inside this Milwaukee impact driver. This is quite a new tool, I haven't used it much obviously, have used it a little bit, it's got a bit of wear and tear on there, but pretty new so we can dig in and have a look at how it comes almost out of factory. I'll take that battery out and then we've got the tool itself, or the, the, the skin, right. So this is uh, an M18 FID2 and it's got this really nice black over mold sort of rubbery plastic feel or rubbery feel on top of that plastic which makes it really easy to hold and it's got a really nice comfortable grip i really like these milwaukee milwaukee tools all right so it's really just made up of the two clam shells and then this back little plate so it's got a whole bunch of screws there so let's undo them and have a look inside now i've got these really nice wear a bit so I'll just find the right Torx, that's actually a little bit too big. Uh, these are all just Torx, Torx bits, I think they're all the same size, so we'll use this one. But I will cheat a little bit, I will use a Milwaukee drill to actually open that up. Because there's quite a lot of screws there. Alright, I think that should be all. So all of them are actually the same size, so Milwaukee's made that really nice and easy. I don't really care, I can just mix them all together there and they'll go in the same way. So this back plate as well as the handle ones and the top are all the same size. And then actually I'll take that out later. And then these two down here, which is where the battery slides in, obviously a lot wider, they are quite bigger, are quite a lot longer. Which makes sense to hold all that together. Alright, so oh, I've missed one. There we go. Oh no, I didn't. It's just loosened that up. There you go. Cool. Awesome. That should come out. Alright, so that's just half of that clamshell. I'm not sure if these will pop out. There you go. So this is the, the two really nice long screws on this side here. It's really good to see that goes really deep into the other one, the other side, and holds that together. And there's a lot of pressure points there with those screws holding the two bits of clamshell together when you use this so this is no feel of any wonkiness or anything like that this is nice and solid really nice ribbing there as well on the actual uh, clamshell as well as these separators up here i think that'll just hold the motor in place and the actual gearbox there as well a lot of groove so done really nicely very smooth mold not really any sharp edges there at all that i can feel maybe a couple up here but that's you're not exposed to that that's to hold the tool together down here with the battery, this is all really nice and smooth. Like I said, I haven't used this much, so it wouldn't have really been worn in yet. This is almost out of factory. And again, same as within that drill, actually, this is really interesting to see. It's got this extra flap here as well, which is where RFID tags, well, I think it's RFID, um, little, little tags come so these tools can be tracked. But this one also doesn't have one, which again, is great to see. Helps, well, saves me having to pull it out. So that's that half of that clamshell there. All right, and then we'll just pull the rest of this out. Alright, there we go. So this is done very similarly to how that drill is actually built. We've got the two clamshells and then we've got, that's just the center button to the, the direction select. So left, right, and then in the center you've got that tool locked. But nothing all that special to this one, very similar to the other one. Just obviously mirrored. Okay, and then we've just got that head up top here. So this back plate doesn't really want to come out. Unless I take the whole motor apart. Ah, okay, cool. So that's really good. So we've got the stator of the actual motor just mounted straight up there, and then the, the rotor is mounted through a bearing onto this back plate. So it doesn't seem to want to come out. So I'm not sure if that's actually glued in there or just probably just press fitted in there to hold it in place. But that's obviously a really nice bearing the way that spins there. And you can see that this has been balanced as well. So up the top, there's been a bit ground out of that plastic. So it's interesting they balanced it on the plastic and not on the metal. I'm not sure if the metal is actually balanced. No, there's, there's no balancing marks there. That's interesting. That must be really good tooling that they get that balancing so well within the tolerance that they only have to take a little bit of plastic out because that wouldn't take that much inertia out. Taking a bit out of the metal would make a bit much bigger difference there. But I guess it's a testament to the manufacturing precision for them having to make such small modifications there. 
Uh, so that's that's a really nice bit to see. And then, as I said before, we've got the actual stator of the motor here. So obviously, it being brushless, there's no physical contact between the rotor and the stator. It's just a magnetic field that gets generated there. And on the inside here, we can actually see quite nicely. We've got that elastic there covering the whole effect tensors. So there's, I think there's pairs of two there. I can't really tell exactly how many there are, but there'll be a few at least a few sensors there and they will just measure the position of well, the magnetic field in the position of this rotor with respect to the stator so the computer box in here will know which which poles to actually or which phases to actually actuate and how to turn that motor but that's pretty much it with the actual motor it is nice to see these windings as well they're not as thick as in the actual drill so that whole motor is probably about double the size in there as it is on here but these these these, this copper wire here is actually a little bit thinner as well. It's good to see this being thick because it just means that there's less resistance for the current as the current's flowing, so it can create a stronger magnetic field with a lot less heating and a lot less waste there as well. Then from that, we've just got these three wires coming down into, well, this little block, I guess, here of the brain box. So this will just be the three-phase motor. What basically happens is the battery is DC, so it provides a constant, steady, positive and negative supply, which will go into the box. Actually, it will go through the switch, so the switch will turn that on and off, but then it'll go straight into this brain box here, and there'll be a bunch of MOSFETs there that will actually switch that, so turn it on and off in different phases, so it kind of chops that DC up into three different phases for these six kind of coils to correspond with and to pull that stator, so to pull that rotor around and actually turn that. So that's the way you do speed control is you you basically turn that switching on to faster so each phase spends less time turned on which means it spins around a lot faster and the more current you pump through this the more torque you end up getting so we can't really see any of the electronics within that that actually do the control because it's all poured into this electro uh, into this little plastic box and then just epoxied together to actually prevent movement and vibration and everything from there there is just a little capacitor sticking out, uh, 200, 200 microfarad, 35 volt there. So that's good. This is this is 18 volt battery. So you'll get slightly more than that out of full charge, but it's good that they've put a safety margin on that, obviously with the higher voltages there as well. And then the only other bit of electronics that we can see is just this board down here. So there's nothing on this side, but this other side, see if I can take this off. There we go, so that, that comes off really, okay, well, pretty nicely, I guess I was going to say really nicely. Uh, all right, so that's just a speed select. So this has three different speeds, actually it's got four different speeds. So that one there, um, I think would just be for drilling. So the, the highest speed and the, the most torque. And then you just press this little bit of rubber that presses a button on the board to actually change those modes. So that's that board there. We just have four LEDs down the bottom, which obviously correspond to the different mode. We've got that little push button here. We've got a few diodes there, a couple of resistor and a capacitor, so not really that much going on on this. And as I said, there's nothing on this side here. So a whole bunch of wires there, which tells me that this is a pretty dumb board. It will just have um, correct connections between this board and the actual motherboard in there. There probably won't be anything, actually there isn't anything special going on on this board. It's all just analog um, reads or the digital on off button that it reads and then the diodes just prevent the power from coming back but all everything all the processing all the actual thinking will be done within this main board here that's tucked away under there and then we'll just have a quick look at the trigger as well so it is a really nice trigger and as i sort of mentioned before we've got the power coming to it because this will act as an on off switch as well for the whole system but it won't actually have all the power running through it to actually power the motor so what it will do is it will send a pwm so pulse width modul modulated signal from this down onto this board and then this board will use those MOSFETs to actually switch the power and send it off to the motor. And there is a few more wires there going through it so it must be doing some other sensing and actually just powering the potentiometer within that. And then up the top here we just have this switch here, we just have three different positions. So that's just going to be left, right and then you're going to have that center which is what locks the, the tool from, from being used. And then out here we've just got a little LED so just two wires positive negative to that and this is just a grounding wire so that mounted to 
I think the case here, which then mounted to the actual gearbox, yeah, to the actual gearbox assembly here, which would just basically filter any of the static and any of the high frequency noise that gets generated by this would just take it back down through the board into the battery and just sort of ground that. But this here is the actual assembly or the actual impact assembly. So we've got the input power coming in. There's a really nice bearing there. And then this is a hard plastic. So this will be quite heavily reinforced with fiber to make it really stiff. And then the rest of it is all metal, which is which is really good to see. I won't take this apart because this is very greasy and a, and a lot of gears in here. So I don't want to make a mess of that. And again, this is quite a new tool. And I probably could get it back together, but it's obviously just a lot of effort. So that's pretty much it. It is actually very similar to how the drill works. Um, there's a video of that as well. I took that apart so you can see it and compare it. But this is just quite a bit smaller motor. I think it's not, it doesn't generate as much torque as the drill would and the gearbox assembly is also quite a bit smaller on this one than on the drill because you don't have those clutches and, and the extra hammer mode, you just have the impact um, driver of that. There we go, so awesome, that's it. Thanks very much for watching. Hope you learned something and enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. If you wanna see more of this sort of stuff, consider subscribing. And as always, have a great day.